Well, here it is, Ace Frehley's original 1973 Gibson Les Paul. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff George and I'm coming to you today from my home away from home, my favorite place on earth, Walt Grace Vintage here in Miami, Florida. And if you know me, you know I'm a gigantic KISS fan, a gigantic Ace Frehley fan, and just to be holding this guitar is sending rock and roll shivers up and down and all over my spine. Um, this is a dream come true to even be able to play this guitar, let alone spend the day with it. So. Here it is. So transport yourself back to late 1973, sometime after Thanksgiving and early December 1973, Ace went into Manny's Music right there on 48th Street, the legendary music store, and bought this original 1973 Deluxe. It had already been routed for humbuckers, uh, they had Gibson humbuckers at the, at the time, but Ace always being a tinkerer and always modifying guitars, so not only that they played better for him, but were also more Ace. And one of the most amazing things about this original instrument was early on Ace literally chiseled and contoured the heel of the, you know, where the, where the neck meets the body on the, on the Les Paul so that he could get up into that high B register for songs like Strutter at the time and even Love Gun to be able to get up in there. Um, and this, it's unbelievable how smooth and how great this feels. It feels like it was done by a luthier, I guess. Ace also had a, a luthier job uh, or abilities. But that was one of the first modifications done to this. This guitar can be seen in all these pictures that you will be showing as well of the different eras and incarnations of it. But at the time it had regular Cluson double line tuners on it and basically stock Gibson pickups that were put in over the mini humbuckers that were in there. Later on Ace put in DiMarzio pickups. Both he and Paul had great you know, early relationship with a budding at that time pickup maker called Larry DiMarzio. And Larry actually would hand wind these for them in the basement of his house. Um, and these are early hand wound Larry DiMarzio pickups that have just that real ace kiss sound that, you know, we've all grown to love and admire. <laughs> Besides that, Ace would always put a little star on the headstock of this one. It also had binding on the headstock, which was, uh, which was a little bit different and not like a normal Les Paul standard of the time. And Ace always referred to this as his number one or his baby. Somewhere around uh, 1975, it lost its pit guard and then was, uh, you know, just a regular, you would see all the tobacco burst finish, but the pit guard was gone. And then that also became the smoker. Uh, in that era too, where the neck pickup would, you know, be a dummy pickup and the smoke bomb would put, be put in there and all the original routes and everything are still inside. The burn marks are still inside the pickup cavities, which are unbelievable. And if you smell it, it's still, you know, how many years later now, you know, 40 years later, 35 years later, it still smells like smoke. Um, so this would be the dummy pickup that would get pushed down in and then the smoke bomb would ignite and that was for Ace's legendary, you know, guitar solos with the smoking guitar. <laughs> The classic Alive solo. A little bit later than that, in around the Destroyer Tour in 1976, Ace had rocket launchers on the headstock as well, and you would you know, put the guitar up and shoot the rockets, and one time one of those uh, kind of malfunctioned and burned up the guitar. 
uh, did some serious damage to it. And by then it had been played in so many thousands and thousands and of shows and just was everywhere. This was the, his number one and pretty much played for 95 to 100% of every single show from late 73 all the way up to late 76. So in December of 1976, while the band was on the beginning of the Rock and Roll Over tour, they stopped in Memphis, Tennessee and went to a store called Strings and Things. And at that time, Ace had already acquired his, now famous as well, Cherry Sumber's Custom, which was a 1974 Les Paul Custom. And Ace was kind of using that now as his main guitar, as this one had been through so much wear, tear, damage, and just plain use. He ended up giving this uh, to Strings and Things. Uh, Nick Chattel was the luthier, and gave it to Nick to kind of make it into a double cutaway, uh, um, you know, guitar, which we see think is like, why would he want to change, you know, his Les Paul into this? But he was really into like, you know, double cutaway juniors and specials at the time and thought it would be a great thing to do with this guitar that had so much damage done to it. And in the back of this, which we'll see in the pictures, you can still see the original toggle switch cavity before it was moved down here. And uh, Nick did the uh, full, you know, remod of this guitar. So it was then uh, given back to Ace in mid-1977 and can be seen in those classic pictures in Ace in the Hole where he's got all his guitars, the bursts and all the SGs and all this stuff. You can see this one right behind him or right next to him at all times. And to be able to hold it and to play it and to you know, come in here to Walt Grace Vintage and be even close to this guitar is a true honor and a dream come true. <laughs> So they always say goodbyes are the hardest, right? And for me today, this one truly is. I don't think I'll ever be able to say goodbye to this guitar, and spending the day with it has been magical to say the least. Um, the thousands and thousands of pictures that I've seen of this guitar and videos and stuff throughout my life, uh, this guitar is so ingrained not only in my head and in my brain, but in my soul. And um, you know, then you think about the thousands of shows and the thousands of miles and all the things that it's done. It's a true, true, true legendary piece of rock and roll history. Um, looking at the back, it is signed by Ace for the various times he's been reunited with it as well. Um, this was only my first time being you know, united with it and I cannot wait to be reunited with it uh, as soon as possible. If you're ever in the Miami area, come down here to the like I said, my favorite place on earth, Walt Grace Vintage, and come give it a spin for yourself. And then you'll be able to feel the true electricity that I felt all day with this. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.